Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Parlay Revival. Last week you saw our buddy boat end up on the reef in the Cook Islands, but we managed to eventually get him off after a few hours of pushing him around. This week we set sail to Beveridge Reef, a three day sail away, but end up being in some of the worst seas we've ever experienced on Parlay. Stay tuned and hit the old subscribe button if you like what you see. So I'm Colin, and this is the crew of Parlay Revival. From hurricane damaged to broken bulkheads, and getting struck by lightning not once but twice, to being the strongest and fastest Lagoon 450 on the planet. We are now sailing 5,000 miles from Mexico to New Zealand, my home, before continuing our circumnavigation. So subscribe to follow our journey around this beautiful planet. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? So we wanted to try to keep a six knot average to get there in the daytime on Saturday. Well, we've been doing a four or five knot average. So we're gonna have to bring out the big guns. Gonna get the uh, spinnaker out. See if we can get that six knots. Well, now we have to make up for last time, so we need to really get seven knots. So uh, we've only got about eight knots of wind, apparently. You see the flag's hardly moving. The reason it was so important to get there in daylight was that Beveridge Reef is a submerged atoll with only one pass, which should absolutely not be attempted with bad light if you've never been there before. I had heard that it was also slightly off on the charts, so we would have to have our wits about us even as we approached the atoll itself, let alone the pass. Once inside, the amount of protection we would have would be minimal, as there is no land to hide behind, only submerged reef, so conditions would have to be ideal to stay there. Yeah, baby! Six and a half knots. So the wind's at 120, which is about there. Straight on. Beautiful. So we're going faster now than when we were motoring. Change of plans. Right, well. <laughs> surprise, surprise. This is Wednesday. So it means if we stop at Beverage or New A, we're going to end up in that. It's a shame. We're just one day too late. Saturday is Perfect. Light winds and no swell. Beverage Reef on Saturday would have been just incredible, but we are not going to make it there in time. Today's kind of going to be our nicest day. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse from now. I think it makes sense to just go straight for Tonga. But we will go, the new way is literally on the way anyway. So as happens out here so often, another last minute decision means everything that we had planned for goes out the door. We've been excited to see Beverage Reef since we left French Polynesia, but the super high winds you just saw on Predict Wind would mean it would be an absolute nightmare to not only go into Beverage Reef, but to stay there overnight. We would be rolling around in 30 knots of wind with what would almost definitely be a sleepless night for me. As mentioned, if we had been able to leave the Cook Islands just 24 hours earlier, we would have had wonderful conditions in the infamous submerged atoll. Anyway, this awesome crew were still all smiles despite the last minute change of plans. What is going on? What is that? Oh, what? Look at its teeth. That is a crazy looking fish. It's not a barracuda, but it's got a barracuda mouth on it. Ah, something spiked me. He's just like, he's been slimed. No, I ain't touching it. So. The weather that we've been waiting for is just starting now. We're about 400 mile out of Tonga at the moment. This one definitely isn't for the faint hearted. Um, it's probably the biggest weather system I've seen on Parlay like coming. Uh, when we crossed the Pacific and that, we didn't see anything like this. So yeah, a little bit nervous. We'll just play it safe. We've already got two reefs in the main um, and we're only seeing 18 knots at the moment. but. During the day it's going to build and then over the next few days it's going to really build. So yesterday, Jamie pranked Don here with Vegemite because Don hates Vegemite. So Jamie snuck it into one of his sandwiches. And today we're going to get him back, right Don? That's right, that's right. And what are we doing? What did we come up with? We're putting red hot sauce in his water, but we can't put too much in because it'll change the color and he'll notice it. And Jamie's been using this 
I guess, orange concentrate. So this is gonna mask the color pretty good. Not that big. The World Championship wow. with Parlay. Wow. We're having Wahoo for dinner. <laughs> we haven't had a fresh fish since, well, since uh, two Motus. Um, it's been a bit of a dry spell, but now hopefully we've broken the ice. Caught them. Caught them. I could tell that there was something in my drink. Have a sip. No, I wouldn't. Do it. No, I wouldn't. Do it. it. Oh, <laughs> Tabasco? Never give away or divulge or admit that I have done anything. So, Colin and I just finished filleting the fish. It's a lot harder than it looks on a moving boat. That's my first time filleting it, and didn't do the best job. Had lots of bones and skin on it, but um, Shannon's gonna make us fish tacos. Nice. I made mango salsa. It's been about three months coming for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Fresh. Definitely mornings that you wake up guys and you don't want to be out here and today for me is definitely one. Just woken up, it's my shift. Last night was a mess, everything banging, crashing. The wind went up to like getting nearly sustained wind up to 24 knots apparent. Squalls around us. But yeah, it was a nightmare last night. This is probably the worst weather we've had for such a consistent time. So I'm ready just to be in Tonga now and just have a good rest. So the strong winds that prevented us from going to Beverage Reef were well and truly upon us. And this meant that the sea state was slowly going to become worse and worse. As we've said many times before, the waves and the swell on camera just never looks as bad as it does in real life. But I can assure you in conditions like this, it's hard to enjoy yourself. It's difficult to sleep, so you're often overtired, and when you're tired, things just become more difficult. So I just woke up, trying to make a smoothie for everybody, have a nice morning. It's absolutely wild out there, and this ninja, which has legs, totally just went over, and now my smoothie's everywhere. This is boat life, people. Okay, so the weather has arrived that we were expecting. It's, what, about 18 to 20 knots apparent on us, so probably 22 to 24 out there, but the worst is yet to come. New way is right there. We can see it, but we're not gonna stop there. If we stop there, we'll be stuck there for at least a week. So we're just gonna cruise straight by, which is it's a shame, because a lot of people have said that was an amazing place to stop. But um, no, we're gonna carry on. We have 250 miles to go. What's gonna happen in the next day, it's pretty interesting, we're gonna cross the international date line. None of us on board here have ever sailed or, or taken a boat across. We've all flown across before, but we're gonna go from being, call it three o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday, crossing that line, it'll become um, two o'clock, but the day, but the next day. So it'll be the fastest 23 hours of our lives. So that's going to happen at about 172.5 degrees west in longitude. Um, it, it's meant to be 180 degrees, so that's exactly um, the opposite side of Greenwich in the UK. So that's 180 degrees west and then 180 degrees um, east will meet there. But um, because of the way that the countries are laid out and whatnot, it kind of comes out a little bit towards the east. And, um, and encompasses Tonga, and then it goes right out to the Kermadec Islands and stuff like that, and then it carries on north. So a few things change for us. For example, just one that comes um, to the top of my mind is our the days that we release our episodes will no longer be on a Sunday, it'll be on a Monday. You can see it's pretty getting really rough out here now. Um, so we're just gonna try to get to Tonga. This, right here, is a three and a half meter swell, 
or 11.5 feet in 30 knots of wind with a boat speed of 8 knots. I know this because we've measured the superstructure of the boat and when I sit on the flybridge, eye level is exactly 4 meters above sea level. So when Pale is in the trough of a wave and the crest is just below eye level on the horizon, I know that we're in just under a 4 meter swell. Our drone would give a much better idea of the sea state here because you would see Pale's hulls disappearing in the troughs of the waves. But there is no way I was flying that thing in 30 knots of wind. So it's 9 o'clock in the morning, we are about 90 miles out from Tonga. Last night was atrocious. The boat's motion is so twisty. We're going from like what we're going from like 120 to say 170. And the boat was just really screwing. So we have autopilot in um, high performance now, trying to keep the boat straight. And it's really working hard. So we're at that point now where stuff can start breaking and if something breaks like the autopilot and we go off course and we accidentally drive, that's when we're in big trouble. But it's like not scary or anything, it's just very uncomfortable. Like if you enjoyed this kind of sailing, you got rocks in your head. <laughs> I am ready for this trip to be over so that I can actually walk around and uh, not have to worry about falling over because, you know, Stephen, was the chosen i think i should be called the fallen yeah it's been absolutely crazy not gonna lie last night was probably the first night that i actually felt a little bit scared for the first time on this boat um not because i feel the boat's unsafe or anything just the waves slamming on the side of the hull if you're in mid sleep and then all of a sudden you're in the air it's like these elevator drops out of nowhere so we are about to go across the international dateline it's a pretty cool thing. I've never done this before. We're gonna do something fun to sort of celebrate. While we're in the Cook Islands, I started to see a lot of products from New Zealand that I grew up with that I haven't seen for years. And um, one of them is wheat bits. So I grew up eating these. I used to put a ton of sugar on them, in all honesty. But they are absolutely never to be eaten dry. So we're gonna eat them dry. We're gonna have uh, five of us have a competition to see who can eat one the fastest. And um, we all have to eat it. And the loser, whoever comes last, has to do a shot of a raw egg. Also, in order to celebrate the crossing, we're gonna have a shot of a boiler rum. This has been in the bilge since 2020 when we planned on doing our first Pacific crossing. On top of that, just to acknowledge King Neptune, the god of the seas, we're going to make an offering of a silver coin um, to him into this amazing ocean that has kept us safe so far for so many years and hopefully for many more years to come. So, let's eat some wheat fix. You look ready to go. Well, I, I can tell you after evaluating this wheat biscuit or whatever the hell it is, it looks like pressed cardboard. <laughs> and it doesn't smell much better. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I reckon it's the driest I've ever tasted. <laughs> Gator! Gator! How we doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's still chipping away at it. Done. Oh. Done. Done. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. I got a little trick for you, y'all. I've done that bow. So why do these things exist? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. You've all officially sailed across the international date line. Something no that not many people can say that they've ever done in their lifetime. We're no longer polywalks. <laughs> <laughs> 
And happy Tuesday. Anything to say, Dom? Oh, yeah, it's Tuesday. Yeah, we're no yeah. longer polywalk. <laughs> <laughs> I've just checked the logbook and added up a few um, distances. Jamie, Britt and I have done 6,000 miles of sailing since Mexico, where these coins are from. And Shannon and Don have, at this moment, done 1,400 nautical miles. And we've still got about another 100 to go until we're anchored. So at the end of this trip, you guys should have done about 1,500 miles on Parlay. Pretty cool. Very cool, very cool. Okay, this trip has exceeded all the things I thought it would be. It's been beyond incredible. Bent in the old lens. But we're still rowing. <laughs> we got the shot. <laughs> we all just changed our times to Tonga time. So Tonga is actually the same date as New Zealand, but an hour ahead. Strange, I don't know the reasoning behind it. Leave a comment if you do. We made it to Tonga, but this anchorage is super busy. And um, it's a hundred feet deep. So I've put 300 feet of chain out, which is everything we've got. Thank God we got the new chain. Our old chain, we only had about 160 feet of usable chain. Never ever anchored this deep before, 100 feet. That's why we got anchor alarms. I can't believe we made it. It's a wild trip, but we're here. Finally. It's wild to think that you're in Tonga. We're kind of on our side of the world now. I'm nearly in the land down under. How many days was it we were at sea? <laughs> it seemed like, like a lifetime. It was like months. <laughs> Especially as rough as it was. Man, oh man. I think that was officially the roughest weather we've been in. It was four meter seas. Coming down this last, for the last couple of days, it's been 30 knots of true wind. It's been tough, really tough. Very, very happy to be here. This has been a very long time coming. And now the anchorage is just dead flat, super peaceful. So we had made it all the way to Tonga. The biggest wave I witnessed on my watch was at the same height as the boom, which I know is exactly 4.8 meters above sea level, which is 15.7 feet. And to be sitting here in the dead calm anchorage in Tonga was almost a little surreal. We have sailed around 25,000 miles from Tortola in the British Virgin Islands, and we were one step away from sailing to my home, New Zealand. This final step though was going to be our most challenging one yet as we sail south into the lowest latitudes Pale has ever been. From here south it will no longer be the tropical conditions that we've had for the last six years and I have to admit I was pretty nervous about it. Okay morning everyone we are heading to the clearance dock to clear in to Tonga. We're going to fly our Q flag, our quarantine flag to let everyone know that we're not cleared in yet and then um, try to get it done this morning. The problem after that is apparently there's no more moorings left so we'll have to see what to do about that um, but I'm so excited to be here man it was we weren't planning on it but we ended up sailing 800 miles non-stop and the plan was to do it in three short trips and because of the weather that you just saw um, we ended up doing it in one go you know it's still a bit fresh but I think that may be the heaviest seas we've ever been in that was four meter, like I said, one of the waves was the height of the boom. And of course, you can never capture this on camera. It just doesn't do it justice at all. Like, it doesn't even look like a third of the actual size. If you ever go sailing and you try to capture big seas and you manage to do it, let me know how. I think the Insta360 may have caught some of that. Um, and I wanted to fly the drone. The drone, from a distance, you would have seen the boat just bobbing up and down and getting thrown around when you're filming on the boat you just can't capture that so anyway trust me it was rough clearing into Tonga was super easy and took about 30 minutes the Tongan people were so friendly and the only clause was that the dogs would have to do a two-week quarantine on the boat 
One of our followers happened to see us sail in and actually reserved a mooring ball for us. So our welcome into Tonga couldn't have gone much better than this. Well, that's Ollie. He's a uh, leg amputee. And now we've got a mooring. It's 20 um, Tongan dollars a night. And uh, there's none available. That just happened to come available next to him. So it's so busy because everyone's here to A, hide from that weather that we've just been out in and B, the regatta starts uh, not tomorrow but the next day. I'm so excited. This is so cool. It's gonna be like 50 boats in this regatta and it's like it's a festival so it's not just racing. Um, it's yeah, there's cultural nights and barbecues and all sorts so stay tuned. I guess that'll be next episode. Let's get to know Vavao. Yep, that's right, Colin. That will be the next episode. Let the Tongan festivities begin. Cheers for watching, everyone. And we'll see you next Sunday in the States as usual, which is Monday on this side of the globe.